about uh, convolutional neural network so uh, we will be talking about learning and classification with convolutional neural network okay so this topic uh, is the last topic of the syllabus so i will show you three papers uh, from which you can study uh, about convolutional neural network so this is the first paper gradient based learning applied to document recognition this is the second paper imaginate classification of deep convolutional neural networks and this is the third paper so until a neural image caption generator so in this three papers you can find uh, details about the convolutional neural networks and its variants so today we will start talking about convolutional neural network and uh, we will give uh, we will give uh, emphasize on the architecture of uh, deep neural network on uh, convolutional neural network and other variants of convolutional neural networks so before we talk about the convolutional neural network uh, let us introduce uh, what is image classification so if we define the image classification then uh, image classification is the process of categorizing and labeling groups of pixels or vectors within an image based on a specific rules okay so this is the uh, this is the rough definition about image classification now if you uh, if we consider there are two images okay so we don't know uh, what these images are now there is a classifier so this is this uh, this object is labeled as the classifier so this is the classifier and these two are the images and we don't know about the about these two images now when we will pass this images through this classifier the classifier will have the ability to classify these images as apples and oranges okay so if we provide uh, the image of this apple to this classifier then classifier will have the ability to successfully classify this uh, picture or image as apple okay so this is the label here apples and oranges written over here are the labels okay so these two images are categorized or uh, categorized categorized or grouped into two different labels uh, apples and oranges okay so uh, to understand the image classification we can uh, we can consider this example now how can we see the images so if we consider uh, if we consider an grayscale gray grayscale image then the grayscale image uh, grayscale image are numbers from 0 to 255 okay and if we uh, if we convert these images into a matrix then we will have a two dimensional matrix for a grayscale image and uh, if we uh, if we see them as uh, pixels then we can see so this uh, these are the different sets between 0 and 255 okay so these are the different sets of black and whites between 0 and 255 so 0 represent the black and 255 represent white okay and in between 0 and 255 we will have different sets of black and whites and this 256 different sets will constitute this grayscale image okay and this different sets represent different numbers so and this different sets may appear in the image with different frequency that means if we consider a particular set between 0 and 255 then that set may represent a number and that number may appear in the image uh, uh, in the image frequently or infrequently so if we consider this uh, this 
white a white color set prominent white color set as pixels in the image then this pixels will have the pixel values or the gray scale values which will be close to 255 okay which will be close to 255 and if we say if we see the dark uh, dark pixels then the corresponding pixel values or gray level values will be close to zero okay so uh, we can say that the image is a collection of pixels or image is a collection of gray level values so this is the uh, this is the pixel uh, form of uh, pixel form of the images gray scale images and here we can see the corresponding numbers now how the computer sees uh, how the computer sees the images so here computers only see the numbers and these numbers will be arranged in a two dimensional matrix now if we consider the gray scale image we will computer will see a two dimensional matrix in which the gray level values or the pixel values will be contained and if the computer sees a uh, colored image then colored image will have three different levels okay so rgb means r stands for red green stands for green and b stands for blue so that means there will be three different levels and that that means the dimension of if the dimension of a gray scale image is 1080 into 1080 then we will have three different levels for rgb image that means the dimension of the rgb image will be found in a volume so 1080 into 1080 into 3 3 three for three different channels red channel green channel and blue channels okay and computer can only see the numbers of these three different channels of a gray gray scale of a uh, color image or rgb image now if we consider the tasks of the computer vision for classification or prediction then what we do we provide this image to the to our algorithm whether it is regression algorithm or classification algorithm and then this image is converted into a two dimensional matrix which we call the pixel representation okay and then if we apply the classification technique for classifying this image then in the output we will have the different probabilities for different classes now if there are four different classes being uh, which, which are labeled by lincoln washington jefferson and obama then we can see that for lincoln class we have the highest probability 0.8 okay and for obama we have the lowest probabilities so therefore we can conclude that so this classification technique successfully classified this image and label this image as lincoln that means this image belong to the president lincoln okay so this is for the classification problem so similarly we can consider the regression problem and in regression problem the output variable will take the continuous value okay and in classification the output variable will take the class level and it can produce the probability of belonging to a particular class so as i said that in the output of the classification technique we can have the matching scores we can have a probability score so if we have the probability score the highest probability belong to the to that particular class which uh, which will uh, which will used for the input image that has been classified by this classification technique now what are the different challenges we can face when we uh, when we recognize an image or classify an image okay so what is image recognition difficult so we can have the multiple objects in the image so if we consider this image we can see that different different fruits and different vegetables here we can see in this image in the second image we can see the different fruits or vegetables in the third image also we can see and these three images will be found and three three different 
viewpoint. Okay, these two are found in the same viewpoint, first and third image, and the second image is found in different viewpoint. That means we can have the multiple objects, and to recognize an object within uh, among uh, in the multiple objects in the image is a difficult task. Okay. and we can have the different viewpoints that means a single image can be appear in dif uh, in different uh, different orientation with different viewpoints and at the same time we can have the lighting conditions that means we can have different lighting conditions which can be found in the images so in uh, if we compare the first and second images then we can see that the second image is found to be slightly dark image in compared to the first image okay we can have the deformations even we can have the occlusions we can have deformations we can have occlusions and we can have many correlated features in different uh, in different objects okay so therefore uh, it is found to be uh, it is found to be very difficult task for image recognition classification or prediction so these are the different difficulties of image recognition and classification now before uh, before the introduction of uh, before the introduction of uh, deep learning techniques or deep models we generally used handcrafted features okay so whatever the conventional machine learning techniques we have discussed until the last class so all they are found as the conventional machine learning algorithms okay and this conventional machine learning algorithms generally use the handcrafted features okay so previously before the introduction of uh, convolutional neural networks like machine learning models the researchers used the handcrafted features with conventional machine learning algorithm okay now what is the handcrafted feature so handcrafted features refers to properties which are derived using various algorithms using the information present in the image itself that means whatever the information we will see in the image or we will find in the image so that information is used by different algorithms in order to derive the handcrafted features okay now for example we can derive two simple features like edges and corners so edges and corners uh, may be two examples of handcrafted features we can have the other other we can have the other examples like x y coordinate we can have the orientation we can have the scale we can have the key points so these are the handcrafted features now there are some disadvantages of handcrafted features so handcrafted features are usually not robust okay so these handcrafted features are not found as robust as convolutional neural network features and they are computationally intensive due to high dimensions so every time when you when we extract the handcrafted features the handcrafted features are found to be very high dimensional features okay and the discriminative ability is found to be very low so when you use the handcrafted features with conventional machine learning algorithms the discriminative power or discriminative ability of the conventional machine learning algorithm is found to be very low with the handcrafted features okay now there are two different pipelines we can use so the first pipeline is for the handcrafted features in the in the first pipeline we have the different modules input modules this is the feature extraction modules this is the feature selection modules then we are uh, then we can use the conventional machine learning algorithm for classification or regression and finally we will have the output module so in the output module we compute the uh, we compute the matching scores or probability and if we see the second pipeline which uh, which uses uh, the deep learning features or deep learning learned features then we can see this there are three modules only okay input module output module and in between input and output module we have this black box type deep learning feature extraction module so this is 
sometimes we sometimes we found this module as the black box module okay black box means in this black box module of deep learning model here the feature extraction is done automatically plus the classification or prediction is also done automatically even feature selection if we want to have the feature selection in this black box type module then we can also employ this feature selection module or feature selection task with this black box type deep learning feature extraction module okay so this module is act as the black box that means here the feature extraction done automatically feature selection is done automatically as well as the classification is done automatically but if we see the first pipeline then we can see this this five modules are found independent okay so independent means they are uh, they are uh, they are uh, independent in the sense that the modules are independent but the modules are dependent the information which are coming from the previous module okay so these modules are found separated in the first pipeline but if we use the deep learning model then the deep learning model act as the black box in between input and output so here we have used the uh, automatically extracted feature here we have the features to be selected automatically here the classification is done automatically now in the last class uh, we have talked about multi layer perceptron so if we uh, if we perform the classification with multi layer perceptron or multiple uh, or multi layer perceptron like uh, neural networks then generally what we do we provide an image to the input okay and this image is converted into two dimensional or three dimensional matrix for grayscale image as well as for uh, color image and accordingly we will have this one dimensional vector that means when we get the two dimensional two dimensional matrix for grayscale image <coughs> this two dimensional matrix is converted into one dimensional feature vector and this one dimensional feature vector is provided to this input layer and the number of uh, number of number of elements or number of features which are present in the in feature vector will be equal to the number of neurons in the input layer and then input layer propagate these features to the hidden layers okay so here we can see there are three hidden layers this is the first hidden layer second hidden layer and third hidden layer so here all computations are done in these three hidden layers so summation as well as the activation so both both these operations are done in this uh, in this uh, neurons of these three hidden layers and finally we uh, classify we classify this image uh, uh, based on the probability which has been determined in the output layer okay so in this example we can see the uh, the image is provided so this image contain a bar so this image will be classified as the bar and the corresponding neuron in the output layer will uh, will generate the highest probability so highest probability value indicate that the that the input image is found to be bar okay not the other class levels so uh, when we when we perform the classification with multi layer perceptron then uh, we can have this uh, simple network neural network now if we use this uh, if we use this uh, multi layer perceptron with convolutional layers or pooling layers then we can uh, we can obtain the convolutional neural network so we will come to that point how we can uh, obtain that uh, deep learning model as convolutional neural network so before that uh, we will talk about the feature representation in hierarchical order okay so how we represent the features so when we provide the features in the input layer so we can have three different types of features low level features high level features and another is the mid level features okay so if we consider this multi layer perceptron so here we can see that there are two hidden layers 
one input layer and one output layer okay so here when we uh, when we provide the uh, input feature vector uh, through this input uh, input layer then this information is propagated to the next hidden, next hidden, uh, next layer that means the first hidden layer so here we get the low level features and this low level features include the edges that means this the first hidden layer is responsible to construct the edges and blobs from this raw features which has been provided to the input layer and from this uh, input layer when the information is propagated to the first hidden layer first hidden layer construct the low level features and low level features may include edges blobs like features okay and when the output of the first hidden layer is propagated to the second hidden layer then the second hidden layer may responsible for constructing the high level features and these high level features will include or may include the objects and and event okay so low level feature extraction is based on the signal or image processing techniques and high level feature extraction is based on machine learning techniques now if we have more number of hidden layers then we can uh, then we can see that there are another type of features are available in between the first hidden layer and the last hidden layer if we have more number of hidden layers so that is mid level features so in the mid level features we can see that the objects are found partially constructed and the affine transformation is done so in the affine transformation what we see in the affine transformation we see that the the straight lines uh, straight lines and shapes are found to be intact and other other properties of the images are found to be transformed okay so uh, it may be uh, it may be a uh, line it may be a some specific shape okay so uh, a point so these are the these are the found to be intact in the affine transformation but the other properties of the other properties or other characteristics of the images are found to be transformed so here in the neural networks the affine transformation is done between uh, first hidden layer and the last hidden layer and in between the first hidden layer and last hidden layer so we can obtain the low level features mid level features and high level features so here you can see uh, here you can see uh, these three different types of features low level features how the low level features look so this is the representation of the low level features so if we uh, if we if we output the low level features then we can see the output will look like this uh, look like this image so uh, low level features may include edges dark spots okay and mid level features uh, will look like this partial uh, object which have been constructed during uh, during transition period between first hidden layer and last hidden layer and mid level feature include the eyes ear nose and high level features will construct the complete facial structure okay and uh, this complete uh, this complete facial structure uh, is represented by a number of neurons in the last hidden layer okay and this uh, the output of the last hidden layer is propagated to the output layer and the output layer is responsible to classify or predict the input image and accordingly the class level or prediction is decided okay so this is the image classification with cnn so we will uh, we will go uh, into the details about convolutional neural networks so for uh, so just to show the how image classification and done with convolutional neural network so we can take this uh, we can take this hand written digits in the input okay so let us consider this is the hand written digit 2 and dimension of this input is 28 by 28 by 1 so 1 means this 28 means the number of rows this 20 is number of columns and the third component one represent the level 1 level 1 means this is the grayscale image that is why 
we have the one the, we have the the label is found to be one or the channel is found to be one when we have the rgb image or color image this one will replace this one will replace by three so when this gray level uh, image or the handwritten digit image is provided as input to the convolutional neural network so we will go through a number of convolution operation as well as pooling operation okay so we will talk about uh, in details about what is convolution operation what is pooling operation and how pooling operation is performed how convolution operation is performed and what are the different types of convolution operation we can uh, we can perform or what are the different types of pooling operation we can perform so we will see them in details in the next slides and after a number of convolution and pooling operations so here we get the reduced set of features so as i uh, as i said that when we use the handcrafted features so handcrafted features until unless we apply the feature selection technique we cannot reduce the dimension of the feature vector in case of hand uh, handcrafted features but here when we use the convolutional neural networks after a certain number of convolution and max and pooling operations here we can have the reduce uh, reduce dimension of feature vector which is called the flattened feature vector okay this feature vector is one dimensional feature vector and one dimensional feature vector will be found to be reduced dimension okay so this is called all this is also called the flattened feature vector and this flattened feature vector is then provided to the neural network classifier so here we can use the multi layer perceptron with a number of hidden layers okay or we can use a simple a multi layer perceptron where only one hidden layer can be uh, can be there okay so according to our requirement of the application or according to our requirement of the classification or prediction so we can uh, we can generally uh, generally uh, generally uh, replace this neural network with a different model of the neural network and most most of the time we use the uh, variant of the multi layer perceptron and uh, to this to the input layer of this multi layer perceptron we can provide this flattened feature 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 vector as input and this flattened feature vector the features of this flattened feature uh, feature vectors will be uh, will be computed as summation and uh, activation and propagated through the, the uh, through a number of hidden layers and finally we can have the classification result as probability values in this 10 different neurons in the output layer okay since we are uh, we are performing the classification of a classification of this hand written digits in which we have 10 different classes 0 to 9 okay that means there will be 10 different neurons in the output layer and for 10 different neurons we will have 10 different probability values so each neuron will generate a uh, probability since we are providing the image of hand written digit 2 therefore here this neuron will generate the highest probability in compared to the other neurons in the output layer okay so therefore when this neuron will provide uh, generate the highest probability therefore we can conclude that this uh, the output of this neuron in the output layer belong to this hand written digit 2 okay and this output belong to this hand written digit 2 okay so this is the uh, this is the working uh, principle of uh, convolutional neural network now when we do the image classification with convolutional neural network so we can uh, there are some uh, advantages or there are some merits that we can obtain by classification uh, by performing the classification image classification with convolutional neural network so first advantage is that we can reduce the number of input nodes okay we can reduce the input nodes by obtaining the flattened feature vector we can tolerate the small shift in where the pixels are in the image 
okay so if there is any if there are any deformations in the objects in the image then we can this neural net convolutional neural network has the ability to tolerate the small variable small variations or small deformations uh, of the pixels in the image okay and this will take the advantage of the correlations that we observe in complex images that means if we have a if we have a collection of objects in the images and we want to uh, we want to find out a particular object among the collection of objects in the image then we can use this convolutional neural network because this uh, this will uh, this will uh, this will provide the correlations that we observe in the complex image that means when we use a test image for classifying a particular objects which is found in the image then we can find the correlation between the test image and the object which is found among different objects in the image it is built in convolutional layer reduces the high dimensionality of the images without losing its information so as i said that when you get this flattened vector this reduced dimension of flattened vector represent this entire image okay this entire image so if we have uh, if we have the reduced dimension let's say 4 by 4 uh, into 1 okay so 4 by 4 into 1 that means we have the 4 by 4 matrix so so this 4 by 4 matrix will will provide this flattened vector of 16 elements or 16 features that means this 16 features represent this 28 into 28 number of features that means this 16 features will act as the representative of this input image okay so that is why uh, here we are uh, here we are stating that the high dimensionality of images so when we reduce the dimension then uh, then uh, we uh, uh, we won't lose this uh, prominent uh, feature information after having the reduced dimension of the flattened feature vector yet the special uh, special dimension uh, representation is used for input input data okay so special representation means this convolutional this convolutional layers and uh, pooling layers are responsible to provide or generate the special representation okay that means this entire thing before we do the classification is responsible to generate or produce the special representation okay so there is a subtle difference between handcrafted features and the features uh, which have been generated automatically okay and the features which are generated automatically sometimes we call that learned features they are the learned features okay so the handcrafted features are manually engineered okay manually engineered so we transform the or we derive this handcrafted features manually manually means we first we first uh, customer we first uh, figure out the uh, figure out the feature extraction techniques then we set the parameters okay and uh, manually we can uh, manually we can engineer or transform these handcrafted features from the raw features but in case of convolutional neural network when you use the convolutional layers these convolutional layers are responsible to provide the learned features okay and these learned features are nothing but the automatic features that means these learned features are extracted automatically in the convolutional neural network okay if you have any questions you can ask me otherwise uh, you will continue this topic on coming monday you have any questions sir i have a doubt yes yes uh, sir what will be the evaluation criteria for the uh, 15 marks evaluation criteria 
for the rest of the marks, sir. Okay, evaluation criteria. Yes, sir. So actually, actually, mid semester is done. Okay, mid semester is done for twenty five marks. Yes, sir. And uh, fifteen marks is remaining. Uh, so uh, in the next week or the uh, after fifteen April, I will take the CA one exam. So uh, actually, that will not be exam. So I will uh, I will give. Home assignment. So one or two assignments I will give, and you have to solve uh, that one or two problems for 15 marks. Okay. So okay, that sir. 15 marks and that 15 marks for uh, continuous assessment one, and uh, remaining uh, 60 marks for NSM exam. Okay. And what will be the question pattern okay. for NSM exam? So I will communicate that. Okay. Okay, sir. Yes, sir. Okay. So we will continue this topic in the next class. Okay, that's all for today.